give it says almost done here. Man, it's been a long time though. We're finally back. I'm happy. All right, there we go. All right, well, we're back. Uh, I'm the doll to episode film, uh, episode 23 of the Film Planet podcast. It's, I'm Jamal. It's been a while. It's been a while. We're life, gonna, life. Yeah, yeah. That's all we can say. We'll be more consistent from here on out. Yeah, yeah for it's sure. just we had to get out. You know, really life, like life. That's life. all. Life, that's all we got to say. Life Hopefully, we can get old. big one day where this becomes our primary. This becomes job. our life. Yeah, this becomes our life. But in the meantime, I know y'all understand the nine to five calls. So yeah, but so. now we're back. Uh, we're happy to be back. I know Jamal is for sure. We got a lot of stuff we've been itching to. Um, we're a little behind, so we'll touch on some small things. Um, some stuff might not get reviewed, but we'll we'll definitely share our opinion on it because ultimately that's what you know that's what the that's what matters at the end of the day. Um, so one thing I know for sure we wanted to talk about was Hereditary and Upgrade because it's probably the two most recent movies that we've seen. Right. Um, I didn't see Hereditary unfortunately, but we both saw Upgrade. He saw Hereditary, so he'll probably get give his thoughts on that. And then we're gonna talk about you know a lot of big news in the industry. With, big news in the industry with basically this... a, a two-man war for for fox between disney and comcast um that you know as of right now doesn't have an end date they're still kind of going at it and then we have what else we got um you know we got some screenshots from wonder woman no um, more star wars spinoffs no more star wars spinoffs for now for now Postpone. Um, yeah so that, obviously that could change and then of course wonder woman screenshots aquaman screenshots uh we know we basically have a date now for the aquaman tons trailer. of trailers creed mortal engines yeah a lot, we lot got... of stuff to talk, talk about fanboy over um so it's gonna be a little bit longer than normal um but we're not we're not gonna go too long but with that being said jamal let's let's go ahead and start with hereditary um hereditary to put it plain and simple the second best the second best movie i've seen this year it's not my favorite because I'm not, you know, I beat this and I beat this like a dead horse and I'm going to stop beating the drum. I'm not a true horror movie fan, but uh, what the movie did good, it was a family drama that added a supernatural element. So even if you took out the supernatural element, the performances were great just on a family drama discussing mental illness. Um, it was, it was, I don't get scared. But after that movie, I felt uneasy. Like, I felt like I wanted to take a shower <laughs> because the movie was very, uh, it was just very dread, like dark. It wasn't even like, boo, boogeyman. It was kind of like, why did I just watch Dark that? and depressing. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, the actual director, he used actually, this ain't paranormal activity crap, like, su you know, Hollywood. Like, he used actual occult knowledge like this entity into the movie is actually a part of a true occult so he used all that that's a fun fact i didn't know that yeah he used all that incorporated it in the movie and it just gave you an icky feel it just gave you an icky feeling like i said we got a lot to talk about so i, I will i get i'm definitely gonna get into details another time because it's a topic i want to discuss with nadal that I feel like it's unfair, even though me and him are not big horror movie fans, I do feel like it's unfair, and this movie proves that. Um, it was two performances in the movie that really carried the movie that were excellent, and they probably won't even get a nominated for Academy Award. Like they wouldn't even get a nod outside of maybe a, and, the and film industry. They were itself. two excellent performances, and I've just realized that about the Oscars. Why are they so afraid of horror movies? Uh, I was talking to our friend, and she was like, well, the sixth sense. That's more. It, it, that's borderline sci-fi. It, it's more of a go. It's more of a a ghost story than a not true horror movie. And then they had Get Out. Um, that's not that's a Hitchcock thriller, like a true horror movie. The only one was The Exorcist, in my opinion. Yeah. So we'll discuss that down the road, and we both saw Upgrade. Yes. Um, I mean, I'll start with Upgrade. I. Cause I'm, I'm that guy, like we always talk about in our movie group, you know, like Nadal, I've always been labeled as the guy that likes those weird cult kind of, not cult like movies, but like indie kind of type B films. film, B films. Like I'm, I'm very much into those movies. Um, like I'll use hardcore Henry is probably a really good example of one of those movies. Upgrade is better than hardcore Henry, but just as an example, upgrade was just basically, it knew what it was. I like movies that they know what they are and they lean into it full tilt. And upgrade was that it was just a 
weird, cool little sci-fi action. Um, you could tell like it was straight out of the brain of the director and writer. Like they just like, I have an idea, an idea for a movie. I have the money now to make it happen. Let's do it. And yeah. that's what Upgrade was. Um, looked like not much was left on the cutting room floor. Yeah, it looks like what you watch is what was... They, they cut something as maybe some dialogue that served really no purpose. It, everything you saw in the movie was the cut of the movie. Um, it, it's If you don't know anything about it, it's a guy you know who lives in... The, I don't even want to say near future. I, they don't really specify the time period, did they? they just, no, that's like, what makes it cool. Yeah, you, you just you just know it's in the future you, based, based on the, the city and the world. And he just happens to be like an old soul, likes to work with his hands. He what he does for a, well, quote used to do for a living was rebuild old muscle car, American cars, so Mustangs, El Caminos, things like that. And basically, his wife works for a company that rebuilds soldiers. You know, they get hurt in combat and they rebuild them new limbs. Uh, long story short, these basically they create super soldiers. You know, for soldiers that have been injured in battle. Um, and the other company pretty much does the same thing, but more microchip. So creating AIs and things like that. And he essentially gets chosen by this rich guy to put it in. He has an accident. Actually rival, almost a rival to the company. A rival to his wife's company. Yeah. Um, and there was an accident after he dropped off, a, a car to this client for him. That was the rival company owner. And there was an accident. He became paralyzed from the waist, from the neck down. His wife was murdered. And basically, he's just a man who's essentially given up on life because he lost everything that he loved, you know, his wife. And this rich guy offers to put a chip implant into his neck to give him the ability to walk again, um, basically. And they they drive home the point that he's not walking the chip. He's, his brain is sending signals to the chip, and then the chip is moving his limbs. Um, the reason why that's important is because the chip is an AI. The chip is aware and it's active. So it's almost as he's just telling the chip, I want to move my right arm now. So the chip moves his right arm. And later on, the movie progresses. The chip becomes self-aware. And I guess not really a spoiler. Is it, do you mind just giving spoilers for it or? Uh, because it's a smaller film. So I'm sure people haven't saw it. Yeah. But, uh, uh, I will leave the, it at that if you want. But yeah, the, for the most part, we'll just give our thoughts. I feel the that. best way I describe the movie is, um, Universal Soldier meets Ex Machina. That's yeah, no, that's actually really that's a good way to explain it. Yeah. And if that, I don't even need to spoil the movie at this point. If it, you've seen both those movies, you'll know. Yeah, you'll know what I'm talking about. The, the it's that's I, <laughs> I can he didn't even tell. That's the first time I heard him say that. So that that's a great that's a great way to explain it. Um, that doesn't make you want to see it, then yeah, don't listen to the rest of this. But <laughs> I, I was, I knew the movie would be entertaining. I didn't know it would be. Yeah, I, it was a surprise. Like, I went in and knowing I'd be entertained by it, I didn't expect. It, it to was like actually it. a good movie. It was actually a really good. Saw saw a little movie there. Um, um, I mean that. Let's talk about just the action scenes alone in it. The, the way they shot those action scenes is, if you know anything about action movies, they will move the camera as punches are being thrown to make them look thicker and heavier. Cause a lot of you got to understand those punches aren't actually landing. So right. you get weird angles. The camera will tilt as they punch, um, watch a Jackie Chan movie to kind of explain that to you. Um, but they will do that. This one took it to a whole nother level on how they did it Yeah, is remember he's paralyzed from the neck down. So the way the camera moves, I don't know if you noticed this, the camera moved as if a body that was stiff that he didn't have no control over. Right, it did. It was like we were ahead and we were attached to the body, but we were seeing You know what it reminded person. me of? It reminded me of when you're in elementary school and, you know, you're messing with your friend or getting bullied even yeah. more. And he's like, why are you punching yourself? Why are you punching That's yourself? That's a great... It, but it was more focus. It was, it, more, yes, it was exactly. more focus and technique with it, too. Exactly. And it's just cool. Like, for example, whenever... Cause when they were, cause the man, the man can't fight. The, the man just builds, he just rebuilds cars. He has no ability to fight. The the AI, the chip in his neck, basically when he when he gives verbal permission, can take over and control him fighting. Which if you've seen any of the trailers, you get a glimpse of that. But for example, whenever the AI will, were to dodge a bullet, the camera would fall backwards with you. Yeah. You, you, that I for me, that stood out to me because that's. I like those camera. Like mm. anytime he would stand up from the back, it was a, obviously like a hip camera that was attached to the actor that would just move with his motions, which I thought was really cool. It just 
it brought another it, it sunk you into the movie that a lot of action films a lot of action films shoot their differently their action and they just they chose a really cool way right. of doing it um you're basically the camera was the body you're you're the head along with the main character you guys are saying the head the camera is the head from a third party a third person perspective so when if you did flips the camera flipped with you as if you were a head going spinning around right it's cool little elements like that that i don't Honestly, I don't even think most people would even notice that, but, nah, but it, it's and then the story itself was short and simple. Short and simple, yeah. but executed it, very good. So, yeah, what it, would you give your rating for it? Man, honestly, um, I give it a solid like a solid eight point five out of ten. Eight point five. I was gonna give it like a seven point nine. Yeah, yeah, eight point five out of ten for and me. And I give Hereditary like a nine point two. Like Ooh. it is really good. So that, like, that make that's your second highest rated movie. Yeah, it's yeah. really good. It it really it really is a yeah. good movie. Yeah, so I mean, would suggest people if they if they're still in theaters. Obviously, I'm pretty go sure go see both. Okay, yeah, go see like, both. Yeah. Definitely go see both in theaters. In theaters, they they're that's those movies are a theater experience. Would you say? Right. Yeah, I haven't seen Hereditary, so I can definitely speak to Upgrade. But uh, I guess I saw Upgrade two days back to back in a row. I, I loved it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, no, that was a good movie. Go check that out. Um. um we, you know, um. I want to, because it's such a big film, um, I just want to get this out of the way before we get into our other news. Like our next podcast, since this is such a big film, we might tie it to mm-hmm. Jurassic World. We'll do the Credibles and Jurassic World together. Yeah. Since they're such big tentpole franchises. Um, Solo, I want to throw out Solo. It was a good movie. Yeah. It was entertaining. It was it good. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. So this is going to segue. I mean, that's plain and simple with Solo. Like, it was good. They felt like younger versions of Harrison Ford, Billy D. Williams. They did. The acting was good. Mm-hmm. But we want to segue into the the lack of success of it, which they nullified all spinoffs for now. Yeah, that was and, as of yesterday or today, Yeah, as right? of yesterday. Yeah. Lucasfilm. And, you know, the reason we want to bring this up is because I told... Nadal and our friend Regina, before it even happened, it was a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> I told him because Star Wars, Harry Potter, uh, Middle Earth, those movies are epics. Those are the four horsemen right there. Those are epics. <laughs> those movies kind of have a grand feel. So to me, I always said if you're dropping one every year, whether it be a Fanta- you know, if you're dropping a Fantastic Beast movie every year, or you're to a Hogwarts spinoff, or you're dropping, it kills the magic of what those movies do. Their like, gravitas has lessened. It, they're like store. I know one is. I know two of them are actually based on books, but it, even in the term, uh, even in for Star Wars, it's like a book taking place on the big screen. It's like okay. Let me close this chapter and read this little fan fiction. That's how that's how it felt. Mm-hmm. And I told people it would start to feel like that. Rogue One, the reason Rogue One worked, because it was a mystery behind it. How did Leia get those Death Star plans? Yeah. Who got them to him? Mm-hmm. But, some, but the beauty of Han Solo is the mystery behind it. Is the mystery. It. Same with Yoda. So to me personally, I'm going to tell y'all this. If they're going to revamp it, I, I told Nadal this. I said, Boba Fett is a good idea. But after Boba Fett, you need to go way back in the past or leave it alone. And or that's go, just my opinion. Yeah. It, it, no, I agree 100%. Like, there's, I think we were talking about it, not to get into the video game movie talk, but the fact that they want to do a prequel for the Uncharted movies. I'm like, a lot of the, the coolness behind Nathan Drake is you don't know his past outside of this old guy that's kind of raised him his entire life. Mm-hmm. That's 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 what you know. Kind of like Indiana Jones, you don't really know his past. You just know he does this. Sometimes the I think what it, they called it a uh, they 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 did it with the the Force Awakens. They accused um JJ Abrams of it. He does the mystery box writing. Mm-hmm. He presents something to you but then tells you nothing about it right. and let your mind run amuck about it. What people like about Han Solo, they might not even realize it is they have created their own image of what the, he is. The Kessel and Run. They, that's, it, while that scene was cool in the movie, it's like, now that I've seen it, I'm like, oh. Because you've, it's like Half-Life 3. You've built it up to be this big, amazing thing, 
and then you see it, and then you're like, well, that fell short. Yeah. That's 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 how I would explain that scene. I'm like, man, the Kessel Run. This is, it was cool while you was this, watching it. This is like the Mickey Mouse. Like, people just, they don't even start with But everybody things, had their own idea of how the Kessel Run And then Run you see went, it, and then you're just like, And it's oh. good, but it's like, okay. It just, it falls short of your personal expectation. Yeah. Not, I'm not saying this, my expectation is everyone's. I'm just saying what in my mind I've seen it as is not what was on the screen. Um, so it's, it's things like that that he's talking about. The mystery behind that character is what makes him, I don't want to say great, but makes him appealing to a lot of people. Yeah. Because they can humanize uh, Han Solo and make them an every man's. Now you're just like, well, now Han, you know, it, it's. He's still an every man, but now you know his story. So it's Yeah, so like... now it's not like it's almost harder to relate to him in a way not in a bad way just like before you're like han solo is my brother he's probably just like me yeah because, because you were creating your own backstory for him and then to see you know this you know i'll i'll admit this as a lifelong star wars fan that a casual I, i'm not one of these people burn star wars to the ground like the, <laughs> the, in the twitter sphere like the, the new because i love i love the, I, I thought last jedi was great like i did like the force awakens better but i do think Last Jedi is a better film. Yeah. Um. But um. It's like this. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I'm not one of the people. It was a negative for me. But seeing Han Solo around somebody else than than Leia kind of threw me off a little bit. It's weird, almost. It was almost like. Plus, how do you buy into a love story if you know it ultimately doesn't work out? See what I'm saying? That's why I it's said like, Boba Fett is a mystery, but he's not a mystery that his mystery doesn't appeal you, you to. You want to know what it is. Yes. You, you actually want to know. Yeah. Right? Um, I mean, TV shows do it all the time. There's a reason why those love triangles. Because his father, he saw his father get his head cut off by yeah. Mace Windu. So what happened from there? Yeah. So, you know, that is something you would want to dig into, just mm -hmm. like with Rogue One. But Han Solo, Yoda... For what? These yeah. characters are already established. Their story's been told within the trilogy. Let it go. Yeah, it's... I mean, I'll use, like, TV shows and their love stories. You know, they'll go for four seasons before you see these two characters that you want to kiss, kiss. And then they do, and then it's just not the same anymore. Yeah. The actual build-up and thought behind it is better than the result. And so that that's why you'll see, like, a lot of shows that are dying, they'll close that arc as a fan service. But it, it's... I mean, it is what it is. The, the movie was good. I loved it. Uh, it wasn't terrible at all. Um, but it just, it wasn't, it was like you said, it was an unnecessary movie. Was, good, it, it but need, unnecessary. Didn't need good, to happen. solid, but unnecessary. Didn't need to happen. Um, and let's see, what else, man? Uh, oh, before, before uh, since we talked about it, my rating to Han Solo is a uh, same as Upgrade, like a 7.9. 7.9? Seven, nine? Seven, nine? Yeah. yeah, I... I give it a, I get seven point five out of it. Yeah, yeah seven point five out of ten. Like I said, we don't really put much into numbers, but that's just kind of a give everybody a scale. Um, and that kind of since we're on the topic of Han Solo, let's kind of segue into Disney. Um, so oh, this now this is the big news. Th this is the big news. This is the one that me and him we text back and forth almost because like, it could change. It changes like that. For us trying to, you know, break into being, you know, podcast bloggers full time. Yeah. Um, this is something, something that... very important for us. Yeah, and we follow And closely. film true film fans in general. Yeah. Casuals might not get they need to. They should. But they should. They, they should, need yeah. to, but they might not care. But so for us, yeah. Long story short, well, just to kind of give you an update of it. So Fox says we want to sell. Disney, everyone's go. Disney should buy it. Disney should buy it. The inevitable happened. Disney put in a bid. Um, I believe the initial bid was around fifty-one billion, something like fifty-three billion, something like that. Um, which you know we're not gonna get to the details, but just for the nuts and bolts, fifty-one billion, something like that. And what was it? I think I even said later on, I was like, that's probably gonna, that's probably that might not happen because deals like that got to clear FCC regulation is antitrust all that good stuff has to clear through the fcc first and by while that's done those clauses are always built into those contracts i can back out you can back out you just got to pay me a certain amount of money or fcc can back out and disney has to pay fox money mm -hmm. for a breakup fee is what it's in what it's in there so a bit people don't realize how big this company is but they're bigger than disney comcast and they're not bigger by a little bit <laughs> they're bigger no, they're, not, they're bigger they're bigger. <laughs> they're, they're bigger by a lot 
uh, Comcast came in and said, all right, well, we'll see your $51 billion. We'll raise it to, I think it was like $65 billion, but then we'll also cover the breakup fee of $3 billion. So we'll pay that to, we'll pay that, we'll pay you that back, Fox. So we'll cover you the breakup fee and we'll pay Disney an additional $2 billion for their breakup fee for the FCC. Um, and pretty much when that happened, all talks halted with Disney and Fox because then that new player came into the field and that was something is, I mean, you look at the deal. Comcast is basically saying, we'll pay you more money and we'll cover the breakup fee for both of you. So, and we'll, so we'll pay the FCC their money to get them out of the way. And you guys leave your, you guys come out right $3 billion richer and $2 billion richer. Um, so that probably was good on for about three or four months now. And as of what, two or three days ago, Disney came back and Comcast is probably laughing in their chairs because they just made Disney pay an additional $28 billion for a franchise, for, for a company that they were about to only pay 51. So their new bills around their new bid is around seventy-two billion. Yeah, seventy-two. Um, I don't know the exact details because they didn't release any of that. They just said the amount, so I don't know what if they're covering any type of fees or anything like that. If there's anything like that involved, um, as of right now, Fox has accepted that deal. But again, at the same time, Fox also had a July tenth vote on with their shareholders on whether or not they're going to accept this deal, which they have now canceled and has been indefinitely postponed until until otherwise noticed. So, which basically means in that deal, FCC regulation is for antitrust laws and stuff like that. People, any other, like Jamal and I could go in and say, we want to make a bid for Fox. Obviously, we don't have enough money to do that. <laughs> no, no, we're close. <laughs> um, basically, what it's saying is, FCC's like, Comcast, you can still bid if you want. I can promise you right now, Comcast will come back and, and bid with something. Mark but rumor Moore. has it, they already have set a bid up. Yeah, I think I texted you, I was like, I guarantee you that Comcast made their initial bid knowing Disney wasn't expecting any fight back for this. And because it took Disney a while to come back, but they came back in a three to four month span where it tells me when I'm looking at that, like, okay, they really weren't ready for somebody. So they threw a deal together real quick to outbid Comcast. But I honestly believe Comcast bid their money knowing that they had a second option. Of course. Yeah. So, and and the winner out of this is Fox really. Yeah. The Fox is all, is the true winner. Um, it's. I think we talked about it before. Why we would prefer Fox to not sell to e- either of these companies. Um, but if we had to, we, we would choose Comcast. To, we both lean towards Comcast, even though it's the bigger entity. But the difference is, if Comcast gets a hold of it, yes, they will be a bigger entity, yeah. and it will add even more. But they won't have control of one media market. They won't have a stranglehold on one media market that Disney will. Yeah. If Disney gets it, they will have a stranglehold on the media market. Maybe not economically like Comcast will, but like influence. And they, that's, they will that's one of the a, greatest things you can have, influence. Yeah, they'll own a controlling share in Hulu. Uh, I believe it would go up to about 60% of, I believe, shares in Hulu. Um and then there, there's even talks about them doing their own streaming service. Eliminate movie studios and jobs yeah. mm-hmm. and careers, it which is. going to Comcast, it won't do. It'd be business as usual. Yeah. It, with Comcast, to explain to you who Comcast is, they are a company, they just absorb smaller companies. Yeah. That is what they do. It Like, for example, um, I work for a cable company. If Comcast were to absorb the company I work for, I nothing would change for my day to day. I wouldn't, my, my pay wouldn't change. My benefits probably wouldn't change. Nothing, which I would literally clock in the same is as if nothing ever right. happened. Management would stay the same. It, the only thing would change was probably our CEO. That's about it. Yeah. Higher, higher ups. Higher up. Big other, money. <laughs> other than that, nothing would change. Right. That's essentially what would happen. Disney was already talking about up to 10,000 jobs being cut. Yeah. Because they, because here's the deal, because they're absorbing all of Fox's debt. And the best way to clear debt for a big company like that, fire a bunch of people. Um, whereas Comcast, I'm sure people will get fired. I'm not going to pretend like that wouldn't happen. That because deals like this, that's that's yeah. unfortunately a result. But I, Comcast, I don't know how to explain it. Comcast is just they dwarf the, the little they people. Are they Disney. saying little the little people, people are less be affected. affected. The little people want to be less affected. And as far as the entertainment, because that's Disney's. 
that's Disney's um, meat and potatoes. Yeah, uh, you know that's whereas their... Comcast, their entertainment's not their meat and potatoes. They, yeah, like, so it's they're the second biggest cable company in America. It's so do it, you think? So what we're saying is, you may get an alien movie, but are they gonna take a big risk on it? When they have Marvel, Star Wars, yeah. when they already have a big umbrella, are they going to risk? We'll that? never see a, you know, look at all the movies Disney mm-hmm. buried now because they have an abundance of riches entertainment wise. I love Tron. Let, let me ask this question: How often does Disney come out with original content that's brand new and not a remake? I'm comment below. I mean, it, it's and the stuff that they do come out. I think Wrinkle in Time was probably the most original content they've come out that was Tomorrowland. Oh Tomorrow yeah, it's based Land. on the theme park. Never mind. But, but that wasn't it. That's like written brand new. No one see it. It's not a franchise from the eighties or the yeah. nineties. I mean the movies that people are most excited for from Disney outside of the MCU are The Lion King and Aladdin. All remakes. It, it's and the stuff that wasn't a remake <laughs> A Wrinkle in Time just cleared a hundred million dollars. Its budget was close to three hundred. It's to put that into perspective. Disney isn't making money on new franchises, so they have no conf- They can't have confidence in their own new franchises. Why would they have that in anything new that they're buying? Yes. After spending however much money. Yes. It's so Comcast is a company that they have enough money in their other industries that can cover their their purchase of this company. It. It, it's, it's that I don't know how else to explain it. Yeah, he's right. And, and, just, and it, Disney, as much as people might love Disney, they're not going to win a bidding war with Comcast. No. Nah. The only way they win a bidding war with Comcast, Comcast is just like not worth it. Yeah, I and mean, I think that's that, what, that's the only scenario in which Disney wins. Yeah, if it's not, it's working. Doctor Strange can go check all the scenarios. That's the only one where they win. Yeah, that that's if Comcast gets bored and says, "I don't want it no more. It's not worth the time." It, it's is that simple. Um. Comcast can buy can can purchase Disney to put that in perspective. Yeah, they wanted to buy Disney. The FCC wouldn't and allow that. That would never happen. Or just put that in perspective. If Disney wanted to buy Comcast, they wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, but vice versa. Vice yeah. versa, they can. But yeah, um, that's the the make a you know oh, yeah. the make it short. You know, to summarize, basically, it's a big. If deal. you're a film fan, this could affect. This could knock off small. Because Fox is known for smaller films. Yeah, like um, and some of them are great movies. Twelve Years a Slave was Fox Searchlight. Mm-hmm. Um, Kingsman. I think it's not a smaller King, movie, but Kingsman. Kingsman's um, not happening under a Disney. No, it's not. Uh, what was another movie? It was a, another Academy Award winning movie. Um, Spotlight. That was yeah. also Fox Searchlight. Mm-hmm. So it would really eliminate that. And then I know a lot of people like, well, the X-Men to the MCU. I don't want to see that. And the reason why is because, I mean, I kind of like the X-Men franchise on its own. I like the I like having a different aesthetic than yeah. the MCU. Everything can't be the MCU. That's one reason I'm rooting <laughs> for DC movies, which we're about to segue into that yeah. in a minute. But that's why one reason I'm... Uh, re- rooting for dc it's a palette cleanse yeah, yeah it's <laughs> it's, it's it's variety is good if disney owns all this it's gonna kill it people yeah. always complain about not enough variety in hollywood yeah you're ima- excited about a deal but, like but this. you're excited about you don't know what's involved but you just see the X- which is fine love X- what you love x-men are getting going back to yeah. marvel but it's bigger than that but yeah me. love what as you a love. film fan yeah as a film fan we we were we have a different perspective which is our own perspective um it just happens to be jamal and i have a very similar not even similar it's almost the same um perspective on that and if we're gonna lose a little bit of variety we might as well lose it to comcast mm-hmm. who will allow fox to just basically business as usual let them continue they're not going to get rid of the old guard. They will continue to move on. Um, like Fox Searchlight, to people don't understand, that is a, they basically green light. If me and Jamal were walking to Fox, we'd be talking to Searchlight people for a movie idea. Yeah. Um, they're like a Blumhouse, almost. They, yeah. They, low budget. All right, it's a good idea. I think we, we think we have something here. Let's get going on it. Um, but it, it's, we never know. That, honestly, we'll probably be talking about this into next year. Yeah. Um. I can t- I can pretty much guarantee you that. Um. But I expect Comcast in the next couple months, probably around September or November, to be like, well, we're doing this deal. Yeah. 
Um, because like I said, Fox is in vote. They're supposed to vote on July tenth. They have officially said that they're they have quote unquote accepted the deal from Disney, which is that's normal business for them to accept it on verbally, and have postponed that July tenth meeting for the voting with the shareholders. Right. Which is they didn't. There was no put. They but that came out right after, which is low key just saying we're accepting this, but we're waiting for Comcast to say something. Yeah, of course. So, so. um. We'll see. Next couple of months, we'll determine that. But I promise you, we probably won't be done with this. Um, I, I I expect Disney to at least come back one more time after Comcast does. We'll see. Um, but we'll see. Like I said, I could be wrong. In all fairness, I have I've been right so far. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but we'll we'll I'm excited for it just just in general because like it's just funny to watch rich people fight. So. <laughs> um, but the next thing which we're both very excited for is. And a lighter note, and I mean that in a cool way because the movies look lighter, they're not dark, is Aquaman and Wonder Woman. Yeah. There is more color to both of them. Um, they are more yeah. vibrant. I emphasize this for a reason because you could, it's almost like DC, a flip, a switch flip. Like, oh, our movies aren't doing good anymore. We need to change something. Yeah. So uh, let's go and start with, uh, with, uh, with Wonder Woman because there's a little bit less to talk about there. Um... It's taking the new Wonder Woman movies taking place in 1984. I, I like that title. It's Wonder Woman 84. Like to me, that title right there is just catchy. Yeah. It's simple and it's tight. It seems like a like a like a special cover of a comic coming out. It's just tight. Yeah. Like her, her suit looks the best it's ever looked. Um, Steve Trevor's back. That's a mystery box. I'm not gonna go into my theory because I'm a comic head. So. So he might be right. So I might be <laughs> right. So I don't even want to dig into none of that. Yeah. But um, yeah, it looks good. It looks really really, cool. It's far away, but I'm really looking forward um, to it. And I just want to throw out. I always like to see Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. Not in like a she's fine or she looks good or sexualized <laughs> she looks cool. way. Like she really looks cool. And I told people that. Like I was like, she's going to pull off Wonder Woman. Because she has that Amazon. She embodies She's it. tall. She has that Amazon look. So when I first saw her in the clip of Batman vs. Superman back at two, everybody's like, yeah, Jamal, you was right. I said, I told y'all, man. Yeah. This woman is Wonder. She, she embodies she, she Wonder She looks dope in that, in, in that, in that costume, dude. Like, she, she, she kills it. Yeah, she, she's, she does amazing. I know he likes to tease me about Jason Momoa, but which we're leading into that too. But to Jason me, Momoa's she's the poster boy, child. She's the poster child of DC right now. Now leading into the true poster child for DC. No, no, stop. Is Aquaman? No, he's not. He's not. I'm they might have the best movie. That's but. just me teasing. No, I'm I'm a big Jason Momoa fan, so that's Aquaman out of it. I'm just a big fan of the actor. Um, but. The, the the shots from Aquaman and they gave us a gambit of shots too by the way it kind of gave you what we've seen of him in Justice League versus the more royal version of him um, which every little screenshot that they shared man it looked it looked really good Aquaman um, I, he it, it just it looks Aquaman amazing Aquaman might be the surprise of the year it, because it's practical sets um, I think it's man it looks amazing. I think Aquaman really is good. gonna be the surprise hit of the year. Yeah, um, and then we have a we know for sure we have because I'm gonna be go, attending Comic Con next month, so is, he'll get to see the trailer. Yeah, well, which I'm sure they'll release. They'll probably the release, release the, the Aquaman trailer worldwide, but, but he, he might get to I'll see Shazam. I might get to see sh some Shazam. Yeah, which they footage. probably won't show to the public. Yeah, yet. What, but uh, we'll see that because it, I mean it's a big year for Marvel, uh, for DC and at Hall H for Comic Con yeah. because. They're going to be the big tentpole superhero yeah, Marvel's franchise. Not there. There, Marvel's not there. Marvel's not there. HBO won't be there. Marvel won't be there. So it'll be a packed house for one reason. That'll be DC. Um, so I'm excited to see what they what they bring there. Um, well, like for we we know for sure it's going to be Aquaman. And so a lot of people sleeping on the Aquaman cast. Like they have That's some a good solid actors. cast, man. Jason and Momoa, Amber Heard. Mm -hmm. um, you know William Defoe. Yeah. Um, uh, what's the Kid guy from Nicole the, uh, Kidman's in it? Yeah, the Conjuring movies. Um, um, I can never remember his name. Uh, Patrick, um, Patrick Wilson, I believe. Yeah, yeah, Patrick Wilson. I want to say it's Patrick Wilson. Then, we could uh, be wrong. 
then uh the guy playing black manta the black dude uh um, he has, he has a, a like almost an arab name a, a arab name uh, yeah so i mean it's just like solid acting across the board and also, james black manta Wan, black manta looked really cool too by the yeah, way yeah and james Wan is directing it so yeah J- and james Wan straight up said he's like i'm not rushing the the marketing i'm not rushing the trailer um because it was what a couple months ago we we're like aquaman trailer it's rumor. james Wan, but even he was just like no and then he came out and said, we're using as and, much practical as we can. And nobody has nothing to worry about. Yeah. James Wan has put together the most popular horror movie franchise yeah. around right now. I, th- I think he's going to put, he's going to make Aquaman this big, vibrant character. But there's also a mystery behind the ocean that I think he's going to be able to bring out. And that's something else I wanted to say. Like, um, the ocean Aquaman is, scary, is really never... Aquaman is really nothing we never seen because we're going to this big. Un- it's almost like in Black Panther when they when they drive they fly in their little spaceship and, and they see hit the Wakanda time. and they hit it's Wakanda that big. And, and they it, just take you through the and city. And it's this technological like you know uh, El Dorado as you know Aquaman's call, the call, opposite call. of the of the technological advancement. Yeah, it's almost like a you know a, yeah. a, a, a old world yeah. under under the sea. So it's. It's gonna be cool to see a live action Atlantis. That's what I'm saying. Oh yeah, it's I'm I'm excited to see that. That um, ain't Stargate. <laughs> Stargate's so good. Because that's the way. a TV show. But I'm Stargate saying. Atlantis. Uh, by the way, Jess Mo was there. Yeah, just yeah. saying, it's so, not the first time he's been uh, in Atlantis. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> but um, what else? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, trailer for Mortal Engines, my mm-hmm. uh, third most anticipated movie yeah. of the year. Uh. It just looked tight. That looked good. They tightened up the CG on it. Yeah. Which I think we both called it out in the first trailer, which we expected. You, you know, know what I think? And this is going to be funny. Mm-hmm. People are going to see this movie as the, a Hunger Games type of movie. And it's not. And it's going to be probably better than the Hunger Games. <laughs> and that's what sucks about it. I mean, the people who are writing it, so it's they, they're marketing it as a Peter Jackson film. He is not directing this movie. He, yeah. did, he did write it. He helped wrote it. But the people who wrote the same writing team for the original Lord of the Rings trilogy that right. he directed. So if uh, Fran Boyle, or uh, Philippa Boyle, I, I apologize if I'm messing up her name, uh, Peter Jackson. But the guy that is directing it has basically been under Peter Jackson's tutelage since Fellowship of the Ring and everything he's done right. since. So this is a guy that has directed one little short film um, since then, but he's basically been training under Peter Jackson for the last 25 years. Um you know, he was working with Peter Jackson since he was like 14 in New Zealand. That's He's been with Peter Jackson a very long time. And he's directed, this is his first big debut. And it's clear he's obviously getting the opportunity because of show his stuff, because yeah. of Peter Jackson. Um, which goes to show how much weight that man pulls around in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, I'm interested to see that movie. If you're into like steampunk and more... Yeah, I guess if you're into steampunk, you're gonna you're gonna want to see this movie because right. it's very steampunk heavy. Um, what? I mean, there's really not much else to talk about on there. Oh really. uh, yeah, there's not much else yeah. to talk about with Mortal Engines. Um, Creed two trailer. Creed two trailer. It, it is all right. It's um, good. People were surprised about who the villain was in the movie. Yeah, like, I, 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 they who just, didn't they see reshot that? They, the first one was like a rehash of the first Rocky. The second one is just a rehash yeah, of the second a, Rocky. Kind of um, like the fourth. It's well, Drago. Yeah. yeah, but it's yeah. Well, gee, it's a boxing movie. There's only yeah. so much you can do with a boxing movie. Yeah, but it looks good. Um, it looks good. Um, we're going to go see it. The first one, the Creed 2 is, you saw the first one, there's no reason to go see the, There's yeah, You're going to go see the second one. Um, I, I wanted to throw this out before we, uh, we're going to talk about this definitely further, but before we wrap it up, I want to talk about this too. Um, with Upgrade, Mal 22, um, we talked about John Woo with Lupita Nyong'o. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. I am so excited about the return of action movies. Oh, yeah. To, you know, Predator's coming out. Mm-hmm. The return of pure action movies to the cinema. Thank you, Rock. Even though all your movies are the same and you dress the same. Thank you. We also you, thank you. We appreciate it for sure. Absolutely. Because you're you're the you're the one who kept that. Even Vin Diesel, y'all the yeah, guys y'all who kept, kept it that, alive. Y'all kept that title wave, and now it seems like it's going to be a huge resurgence. Yeah, because it's, it's coming it, back. It's my favorite. It's my second favorite type of movies. 
I mean, don't get me wrong. I know a lot of people say, well, comic books are action. I don't look at comic books as action movie. To me, each comic book movie is a different. Almost, There's a lot of investment into the comic book. Like, it, like it's different genre. Like to me, Guardians of the Galaxy was an action movie. To me, Guardians of the Galaxy was adventure comedy. Um, yeah. Now, Winter Soldier was a pure action flick. Yeah. And I'm not saying... And it was shot that way. In the MCU, I'm not saying, like, uh, they don't have action elements. Just like Star Wars has action elements. Doesn't make it an action flick. But it's a fantasy space opera, which kind of like what Infinity War does. And that's what makes the MCU good. Like... Each movie has a feel, even though it has the same similarity. It has feel, its own voice. Each movie has a feel of a different genre. Yeah. Uh, but my favorite genre is pure action movies, and I feel like these big franchise movies has been taken away from. Yeah. That. Mm-hmm. And it seems like that's coming back, so I'm kind of happy. Yeah, so I'm excited for the new action film. We'll get. In, I think me and him are big action film fans to begin with, so this will. Continue My second up. favorite genre at the sci-fi. Yeah. So it, it's yeah. uh, and again to like you said, just a big thank you to The Rock and Vin Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> you guys definitely kept it alive. Even though I don't like some of y'all movies, y'all kept yeah. it alive. You so. guys don't make perfect movies, but if anything, you guys are guaranteed an entertaining movie almost every yeah, single time, so. whether you like them or not. That it's I'm and in. Mila Jovich. Oh, she definitely yeah, Resident Evil movies went hard. I don't yeah. care what nobody said. A big shout out to her for sure because she kept it alive even with the movies that weren't Resident Evil. She like yeah. uh, that's the one I can't remember. She was like a CIA agent in Paris. Yeah, that ultra, was a cool. Yeah, ultraviolet. Oh, no, it was a different one. It was a oh, I know what you're talking about with Pierce Brosnan in it. Um, oh yeah, that was a that was a cool little espionage slash action flick. She she's one of the few female actors in Hollywood that can carry that kind of genre, um, and because there's. I mean, there's any other ones I I simply don't know about them. No yeah. more straight to DVD action. Yeah, we, we we get in. Like, I'm so happy about this. So. Yeah, so I'm I'm excited. So go see Upgrade. Go see Hereditary. Um, look up that comic that Comcast deal. Yeah, <laughs> just kind of get your get a little knowledge about it and understand what that actually entails. But other than that, I mean that we're we're fine. We're happy to be back. Next um, week it'd be uh Jurassic World and next time that you know it'd next, be next week though. Yeah. But it'll be uh Jurassic World and uh We'll talk about Incredibles, Incredibles too, as well. too as well. So. And then, you know, I'm sure there'll be some more news industry wise that we'll talk about. Other than that Especially with Comic Con coming up. So yeah, we'll Comic-Con. have a big layout. Oh yeah, July the end of July is gonna be pretty big. We'll probably go longer for that episode just because of Comic Con. Yeah. Um but other than that, that was episode twenty three. We're happy to be back. Um thanks for listening. Peace. Peace.